you for joining us today. Uh, I'm Timo Pugh from Rural Gold from the Latterlight Group. Uh, we're here to give a general outline for the application guidelines for the Rural Gold FRCM system with the CMesh 84, 84 mesh, uh, the MXC25 masonry mortar, and also for the anchorage system with the C joint and the MX joint. We hope this will be of use. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask our technical department, and uh, we look forward to being of assistance. Thank you. The system consists of the following materials. CMesh 8484, which is a bi-directional carbon fiber mesh with 84 grams per square meter of carbon fibers in both directions. MXC25, a structural mortar. C-joints, which are special carbon anchors with a 6 mm diameter. MX joint, an inorganic mortar that is used to both impregnate the carbon anchors and fill in the holes where the anchors will be placed. In order to apply the system, you'll require the following tools. A raw gold gun, paintbrush, sprayer, measuring bucket, scissors, steel mesh tubing, gorging trowels, a drill mixer, and a hand trowel with rounded edges. The preparation of the substrate is extremely important. Please replace any damaged or deteriorated masonry units or repair them as necessary. In any case, one must always follow the project specifications and guidelines. The substrate should always be cleaned and free of any dust or mold. Please wet the substrate until fully saturated and then remove any excess water before application. With substrates made of a porous base material, it is extremely important to ensure that it does not absorb the water before applying the structural mortar. It is normally good practice to not only wet the wall immediately before applying the structural mortar, but in certain cases, also in the days preceding the application. This will help ensure that the substrate is fully saturated and that the structural mortar adheres well to the substrate. For the preparation of the structural mortar MXC25, manual mixing is allowed by taking part of the contents of the bag and mixing inside a bucket with a drill equipped with a whisking paddle or similar. Pour the powder content of the premixed bag into the mixer and add 90% of the clean water. Then mix continuously without interruption for 2 to 3 minutes, adding at the end the 10% of water. Let the mixture rest for approximately half a minute before applying. Then apply the material with an additional final mixing if necessary. It is important that you use the contents of the entire premixed bag once opened. For the preparation of the C Mesh 8484, You'll find the carbon fiber rolls are 15 meters in length and one meter high. That's 15 square meters per roll. Open the roll and cut the carbon mesh for the specific required length with the scissors. Please remember when applying to allow a minimum of 10% overlap of the carbon mesh. Application of the FRCM system. Apply the first layer of the structural mortar with a thickness of 3 to 5 millimeters, that's eighth of an inch to around quarter of an inch. Place the mesh 
on the previously applied structural mortar, which should still though be fresh, and embed the mesh into the mortar using a metal trowel, making sure not to push too hard. Please take care that the mesh does not touch the substrate, but only be partially embedded and consequently covered by the structural mortar. Apply the second layer of structural mortar, again three to five millimeters thick or eight of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Over the first layer, again while still fresh, pushing a little. As mentioned earlier, in case of overlapping areas, take into consideration a 10% overlap, that's 10 centimeters or four inches. It is always necessary to provide sufficient overlap in order to conform with the test methods outlined in AC434 guidelines. On corners, these should all be rounded with a radius of not less than 20 millimeters, that's three quarters of an inch. Provide adequate development length of 15 centimeters or six inches with the mesh as you work. All of the previously mentioned details may be important to avoid bond or related failures. If you need to stop working temporarily at lunchtime, for instance, one can stop work before applying the first layer of the special mortar, leaving a section of mesh just hanging, so to speak, and not embedded or covered. Then continue the application as normal on return to work. For hole drilling, when the FRCM system has been installed and hardened, drill the holes through the system into the wall. Please drill two holes every square meter or as indicated in the design specifications. Preparation of the carbon anchor and impregnation with the inorganic mortar MX joint in order to achieve a very fluid consistency. First, cut the C joint carbon anchor to the required length following the specifications outlined in the project. One should allow for both the length of the anchor to be inserted into the wall and the minimum to be splayed out on the FRC system. For instance, if the wall thickness is 15 centimeters or six inches, one should allow for 15 centimeters or six inches plus the 10 centimeters or four inches to be splayed in order to get a total length of 25 centimeters or 10 inches. Then open the five kilogram bucket of MX joint and pour in 0.95 liters of the required total water content and mix for about three minutes. Use a paddle mixer drill at low speed Continuously mix without stopping until a homogeneous mixture is achieved. Then add the further quantity of around 0.35 liters and continuously mix until the mixture has a fluid consistency. This should take about a couple of minutes. Then take the previously prepared carbon anchor and dip one end into the MX joint until fully impregnated and leave to dry for about 24 hours. For the preparation of the inorganic mortar MX joint for the whole grouting, in order to achieve a pasty creamy consistency, first open a five kilogram bucket 
an input of 0.95 liters of the required total water content and mix for about three mi minutes. Please use a paddle mixer, drill at low speed, uh, continuously mixing without stopping until a homogeneous mixture is achieved. Then add the remaining water of that 0.1 liters and continuously mix until the mixture has a pasty creamy consistency. Carefully wet the hole without allowing any excess water to stagnate and then inject the inorganic mortar MX joint into the hole using the raw gold gun. The following procedure needs to be followed for the insertion of the carbon anchor C joint. First take the steel mesh tube and cut it to the required length of the hole. Insert the steel mesh tube into the hole and this will help contain any material spillage. Then inject the inorganic mortar MX joint into the hole using the raw gold gun. and then insert the portion of the C-joint anchor into the hole, being sure to insert it deeply, approximately three-fifths of the depth of the hole. Remove the elastic tubular net containing the portion of the C-joint anchor that is protruding from the hole. And then around the hole, apply the MX joint inorganic matrix in a thickness of 3 to 5 millimeters or 1 eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Then take part of the C-joint anchor that is protruding from the hole, in other words the bundle of fibers, and fan it out in all directions. Then gently push the fibers into the matrix with a smooth metal trowel after which one needs to apply a second layer of MX joint matrix, again with a thickness of 3 to 5 millimeters or 8 of an inch to a quarter of an inch, on the fanned out fibers to completely cover them. All the previously described operations should always be carried out wet on wet. Thank you to Diego and Oma for the work done. I hope everything has been clear. Uh, obviously, the surface can be left as it is uh, for certain projects. For others, if you need to put a, another layer of plaster uh, and so forth, you can uh, finish as you desire. I hope this has been of help. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact us uh, if anything needs further clarification or if you want us to look at any details in the project you have in hand. Thanks. Bye-bye.